present. And uh, all the district leaders here present, past governors, uh, past uh, presidents of this club, and my family of Rotary, good afternoon. Good afternoon. When I was planning to come here, and I saw the plan by the district leadership team that uh, my visit to Rotary Club on Nairobi was going to be virtual. I told them, no, 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 no. <laughs> How can I have a family meeting uh, virtually with uh, my cousins and my brothers and my uncles and my grandfather? You can't do that. <laughs> Arun, I have not seen you in a year and a half, and there is no way I would have missed out for the world to be able to come out and, and share and break bread together. Um, and on the call, I have seen uh, uh, great men and women there, Praful, Lakani, uh, we go way back, uh, and uh, Mike Eldon, uh, Darcy Lotse, and uh, I mean, it's very nostalgic. And um, we have a lot to be grateful for, uh, for the gift of life. And uh, also as Rotarians that we continue in our latest journey to be able to serve others and not self. We had a great session and a board meeting with, uh, with led by Gideon Akwabi and his board members. And where we covered matters that are critical in the very existence and a plan for, uh, for our club here in Nairobi. You have a great history, a history that takes us back to the beginning of the growth of Rotary here in our part of our world. And with it comes great responsibility as the members of the Rotary of the Rotary Club of Nairobi. <laughs> you still hold that title, right? Of the Rotary Club of Nairobi, there's no other. <laughs> but indeed, do our communities resonate with that? Do our other clubs look up to you in that fashion? Those are questions that we must ponder as the existing club membership here in the Nairobi in asking ourselves, what's our significance in this community that we are serving, in our Rotary circles and in our duty and responsibility of service. As I thought through the notes around uh, what I was gonna speak about this afternoon was the act of intentional living. Most people want to be successful, right? And most people also want to make a difference. They want their lives to count and they have good intentions about these things as well. But good intentions aren't enough to achieve success or experience significance because all in all, it requires for us to be very, very intentional about living. A case intentional living in three words. One, being deliberate. Being intentional never occurs by accident. It requires people to think about their lives, consider where they want to go, and plan what they intend to do. The second thing is be consistent. Being intentional requires a person to follow through, the follow through every day. Am I speaking to a golfer here? <laughs> the follow through shot is what counts. Week after week, year after year, intentional living is a journey and not a destination. 
The third part is being willful. Being intentional is a choice we must make and continue making as we face obstacles and challenges. Making a difference takes an ongoing effort. These three words are essential for you to travel the uphill journey of significance. Most people rely on their good intentions, hoping that they will be enough to achieve success and experience this so-called significance. But there's a word of difference between good intentions and intentional living. I would like you to think through the, this particular words as I call them out of the area of good intentions. When I say desire, wish, someday, fantasy, and hopeful, these are some of the words that describe good intentions. Now come to the point of intentional living. What are some of those words that describe intentional living? Action, purpose, today, strategy, definitely, active, I will do it. As you look at this list, I do believe you see why good intentions alone are never enough to change your lifestyle. If all you ever do is cultivate good intentions, but you never act it out intentionally, you are actually likely to become more frustrated and less fulfilled. Your desire for positive change may increase, but the lack of results will leave you highly frustrated. Whether we realize it or not, we live in a land of either good intentions or intentional living. If you desire to be successful and make the world a better place, you will need to choose intentional living. Becoming an intentional person has the power to change your life. And this is how. Intentional living is the best way to improve your life. Many people have big dreams, but few actually follow through on those dreams. Intentional living moves you from that desire to action. It empowers you to follow through. A small intention action is always more powerful than a grand good intention of I think I will. The sure pathway to a better life is consistent living out positive intentional actions. Intentional living teaches you the value of thinking ahead. People who are not intentional wake up every day and are surprised by what happens to them. Intentional living means not letting the day sneak upon you. Intentional people think ahead and plan for the day they want to have. The person who thinks before taking action is 10 times more effective than the person who doesn't. Intentional living inspires you to make every day count. Far too many people hope to make a difference someday. They wait for more time, more money, more status, more influence, or more opportunities. In contrast to this, when you live out intentionally, you look at things differently and you realize that now is the only sure time you can make the most of it. Intentional living allows you to make changes one step at a time. If you want to become intentional and live a life of significance, there is good news. You don't have to change everything. 
but there's also bad news. You have to change something. Intentional people understand that taking deliberate and consistent purposeful steps will improve their lives and the lives of those around them. As Anne Frank once said, how wonderful that no one needs to wait a single minute before improving their world. The secret of your success is determined by a daily agenda. And why is this so critical? Because what you plan and actually do day after day becomes a way of life, becomes your lifestyle. And your lifestyle, more than anything else, affects the outcome of your life. If you want to be successful, you must develop a lifestyle of intentional giving. My family of Rotary, Nairobi, I have listened, I've heard from the board what your desires are to be able to serve our communities this year. And not only our external customers, but also our internal customers. But those desires need to be transformed into intentional outcomes that we wish to see. You have a whole number of so many projects that you wish to see out during this particular year. I was even telling the, the, the club uh, directors that it's raining projects. Yeah, and it's just everything. Let's chop it, chop it, chop it. You got projects, rain of them. But the question is this, who is going to conduct them? Who's gonna run them? It's only us. But we must ask ourselves, how is it gonna look like three years, five years from today? If we are not intentional about your membership growth as a club, then you will struggle. I am pointing out on the very essential parts that we need to work on during this particular year because we can't do everything. But there are those one, two, three things that we can put together to be able to have that desired result at the end of this season. The one part that is central to this is your membership development. When I look at the membership in this club, you have committed members that I know because they're my friends. And that I know because of the work that I see that they're not only doing within their clubs, but within the influence that they have within their communities. But the question is this, how much bandwidth in terms of getting your hands dirty do we have in terms of just that energy that is required to actually get the job done on all those uh, sub service projects and community projects that you have set out for this year. It requires more hands because more hands makes work light. So my family, let us make it our primary agenda on the Rich One, Bring One campaign. All I'm asking of you is this, desire, no, scratch desire, be intentional about bringing just one member to your club, just one member. I think when I look around this room, we all have good networks. I don't think we keep the wrong company, do we? <laughs> yeah? I'm sure there's that one individual that you say, this guy or this lady can make a good Rotarian, right? We should never be a struggle to be intentional about bringing one person to help in doing 
and delivering the agenda that we have for our community. The second one that I'd wish to ask this eminent members is this, make it your business to give to your foundation. The more we give to our foundation, the more impact that we'll have in serving our communities beyond just this year, beyond just our circle or geographical location. Because when you give to the Rotary Foundation, you are serving the world. You are inspiring the world to do more. So, those are the two things, although two pillars I would like us to focus on as we get these other things delivered. Grow our membership, meaning you need to grow more. And for us to do more, we need to give to the foundation very intentionally. The third part I'll add a bonus is let us be intentional about supporting President Gideon and his board as we serve to change lives this year. Just by a show of hands, I would like to hear or see that we are ready and committed to serve our board. Just by a show of hands, are we all ready? On the... What <laughs> my If they could raise their hands. Gideon wants that assurance that we are ready to support him and his board this year. Right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Gideon, you have an army behind you. Make this year count. We finished the first 100 days. I was telling Gideon a little earlier today is that 100 days in Rotary is like half the year. Because guess what? Here's the breaking news. I'm sure Dr. Gitanga, when you finish your presidency, at what stage was it busiest? Was it in the first half of the year or the second half? The first half of the year, once done, you, can you engage anyone else after that? So we only have this half year to get things moving. Then we can cruise, we can be on cruise uh, attitude level, cruise control come January, February. So action is now. We can't be at light camera hundred days later, it has to be at action stage. And I'm sure, and given the commitments that I've seen here this afternoon, that indeed we will activate that. There's something I forgot to talk about, membership engagement. When you look at the agenda within, are we intentional about taking care of ourselves, taking care of our own health check of just asking ourselves, are we happy in here? And it would be good at this particular point to probably ca carry out a membership survey, just to ask ourselves, are we happy? With it? And what can we be able to do differently? I know Sally can relate to this in a HR. What can we stop doing as a board? What can we do differently as a board? And what can we introduce afresh in being able to ensure that we are all keeping ourselves engaged? I know COVID and that this pandemic has really put us aside and removed from us that connection, that human connection. But we still can be able to do it in very ingenious ways in smaller groups and informal settings. Let's get back to the basics, ladies and gentlemen, about the very reason why we 
opted and joined Rotary by being invited. Keep up that great desire to serve humanity, to be our brother's keeper, and to enjoy and to have fun while in service. Let's serve to change lives together. And, I, and you can count on my support as your governor. And let's always do this with one love. Give uh, a quick one or two questions. Things that you think that we have to be here, and uh, we just need to bless my right on his death. Can we ask for money? <laughs> 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 Thank you, Mr. Governor. Thank you. Very inspired experience. One thing I like is that we will be harmony and the president of Kwame. But he has no feelings. Yes, we do two things. And that's very important. Leaders, but also the leaders. Those two things are very important. And both of them need to be done. When we say feed up, it's not necessarily the school that we need to do. Inspiration, motivation, and uh, in case we are lagging behind, we give a tip in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Arun, and uh, Vice President Arun. Uh, Mine is a simple request. Jessica, yeah. Uh, my request is uh, a wonderful speech. Is it possible to share it so that we can share it with young people that we know who are in need of what you just mentioned today? Very good. Well, I saw your hand raised. Really? <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, I, uh, I run a conservation NGO, the Wildlife Foundation, and would really encourage this Rotary to come forward. Uh, I think that uh, Kenya has a lot to offer for the future. Um, I know that in our <coughs> project area, which is our own national park, I was telling a group from uh, the young people, too. And the whole part about Rotary today is that we have to engage the youth. And it's all here in Africa, and it's certainly the starting point is Kenya, and uh, the Rotary Club of Nairobi um, is an opportunity for young people to get engaged. I, I think it's been a tough year for us at Rotary as a club. We've had tragedy upon tragedy upon tragedy, but I am perfectly convinced through this leadership now uh, with Rotary, with the PPs, with the current president, with the, the PE to come, that uh, we're going to grow Rotary because uh, <clears throat> it's the time now uh, for African Kenya to move forward. All eyes are on this region. I can tell you, uh, as a Korean American, as a lawyer, Washington and everywhere, the world is looking at this country, and Rotary will be the vehicle at which we're going to engage. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll take one comment from online, but uh, before that, uh, Nelson. It's a great opportunity to be served by the youngest DG, uh, DG Alex. We feel at, at home with you. And thank you so much for coming to address us as a club. We really appreciate it. And we take the challenge of bringing both the, the, the young, the old, the medium into this particular club because I think you have inspired us. And thank you so much, uh, DG Alex, for coming. Sorry, anyone online has raised uh, their hands? If not, if not, uh, Ritesh, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, President Gideon. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes we can. Perfect, perfect. I just wanted uh, to say a greetings to District Governor uh, Alex Niaga, to Assistant Governor Dan. I saw. Um, Vice President Janet Matenga is also there. Uh, greetings to all. And um, this has been a very 
insightful uh, speech by uh, district governor. And uh, President Gideon, just to reinforce, after we all raised our hands, I think we should welcome, uh, you are the 91st president of Rotary Club of Nairobi. And uh, we welcome uh, DG to our club. Thank you, this has been wonderful, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, Ritesh, wonderful. So, in the absence of, uh, I think, any other comments, maybe online, I want to take this opportunity to welcome uh, uh, Lady Justice Alwatch to come and respond to the DG's remarks on behalf of the club uh, in appreciation. And then after that, Anu leads the next uh, event and uh, DG on my own personal initiative and uh, person uh, that is Gideon Akwabi, not the president of the Rotary Club of Nairobi, I just want to thank you for your leadership, for your friendship, and uh, on the legacy project you've placed on our laps, uh, we will provide the required leadership on the cataract, uh, uh, eye cataract uh, operations. Just as I was waiting for you to come along, or you want to give it from there? Come and give it from here. Be loud enough. You're, you're, you'll be loud, but you need to be seen also. Oh. Karibu, Karibu, thank you. <laughs> I didn't realize that, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, DG Alex. As you are talking, a very good speech, as you are talking, I said, wow. I should have heard all this many years ago. I think my life would have been different. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been very successful if I had what you are telling us today. Being intentional, being deliberate, being consistent, uh, willful, and then, uh, pardon me, I added strategic. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Though some of us are now on the other side of age, but look at the room, we have so many young people. Yes. And this is the best message they could have received. We are not, we are not, we are on the other side, but we are still here. So, <laughs> <laughs> I said on the other side, because just the other day when I celebrated 50 years of my wedding. Wow. <laughs> so, Thank you for that message. As Rotarians, getting a message like this, we now, we, we are good to go. And please, I'm calling upon the younger generation who are amongst us. I'm not, give, I'm not leaving you behind uh, my age group, but the younger generation, this is something to run away with, isn't it? Yes. Strategic in your thinking, intentional in your thinking in, and what you do, and please, you are, the, you are the leaders of tomorrow, isn't it? We will still be there. Okay, somebody has said today. I thought that we are still here, but please, that is, uh, thank you very much for this message. It's very important for Rotarians. It's something to carry forward, something to see us through the next, uh, the next phase of our lives. When you are being introduced, um, DG Alex, I was listening very carefully to uh, A.G. Dan Awendo as he was introducing you. And then he talked about your hobbies. And then one of them was dancing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, fine, because I'm also very interested in dancing. I said, when COVID allows, you and I should be on the floor. <laughs> with, <laughs> with the two there will be two judges. One yeah. will be your wife. The other one will be my husband. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. First President you. Anne, I think without uh, much ado. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would like now to call uh, DG Alex to just to show appreciation, to thank you for visiting our club today on behalf of uh, Rotary Club of Nairobi and the members. Uh, before, uh, before I hand it over, I would like to call Mr. President because it's your show. And the youngest uh, generation, the youngest criteria we have, 
uh, Mumbi and uh, Arin, please come and support the result. Ah, nothing. <laughs> Yes. So I think we we'll just uh, we we'll hold and yeah, yeah, no support. So. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Clinton. 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 Have we switched that one? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's all right. Eh? Thank, thank you, thank, thank you, Sanjeev, for coming through for all of us. I think uh, let me thank uh, past President Anne. She was very intentional about your visits, uh, DG. <laughs> There is a lot of work that has gone on behind here. We normally don't meet here, but uh, through our effort and the uh, Salim we've met, um, where we normally meet is not open. Laiko is still closed. The next hotel, Intercon, is still closed. So we had that challenge and she thought out of the box and uh, very grateful. Uh, I think I'll have, uh, I'll need a glass, charged glass. Uh, we are towards the final, final. Uh, matters attendance membership <clears throat> physical uh, 15 online thank you online i think uh, online we were also 15 i can see you put 10 but we were 15 um clubs in attendance is a rotary club of nairobi langata nairobi east karen nairobi and nairobi and of course, the district leadership was represented by Mthaiga. Mthaiga, Mthaiga, Mthaiga. Yes, 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 yes. Sanjeev, <laughs> Club Kubwa. Sorry, 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 sorry. And uh, thanks for coming through for us. I think we spoke very briefly and quickly last night. And uh, I think you've done a splendid job. Thank you. And also giving us a discount, a huge discount on, on, on the bill. So we are truly grateful. So I would uh, encourage all of us to be upstanding for the final toast. It's probably, we, we, we just thanked Alex. I think we had extremely powerful people here in uh, Janet and uh, Dan, and to which you are grateful that uh, we could find time. And I, I think also for the membership, let me thank you. I can already see from the way we've uh, fellowship here, we are missing physical meetings. So, sorry, you okay? You okay? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's change our glasses in conjunction with the Rotary Club of uh, Nairobi Mutaiga, Nairobi Langata, Nairobi East, Nairobi Karen, the Rotary Club of Nairobi. I give you Rotary the world over. Thank you. God bless you. The official fellowship is over. Oh, group, ah, excellent, excellent, excellent. excellent. We, we take it outside? Wherever, wherever, please. <laughs> Oh, SAA, I think we still have to send SAA. I think we will also collect it. Have we? They're still collecting. There's pay bill, there's a pesa. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yes, yes, yes. Let, let, let's take let's take the group photo. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I saw people propose outside that time. Yeah, I'm okay anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.